air seems to be weightless, and yet it has density, weight and mass. We can verify it in an experiment. We put a sealed jar onto accurate scales. It weighs 318.2 grams at the moment. We cover the jar with a bell gloss and pump out some air. The scales reading is 318.9 grams now. The increase in the jar's weight by 0.7 grams that we observe can be explained through the action of buoyant force, which manifests itself not only in water but also in air. Being surrounded by air, the jar lost as much weight as there was air in its volume. When the air around the jar became less dense, buoyant force decreased. Let's estimate the air density. The jar's volume is 0.7 liters. This means that 0.7 liters of air weigh at least 0.7 grams. Then one liter of air weighs at least one gram. In our second experiment, we put a deflated balloon onto the scales. It weighs 3.86 grams, including the thread. Let's inflate the balloon and tie it off. The volume of this balloon is approximately 9 liters. So, according to the data from our previous experiment, its mass has increased by at least 9 grams. For the inflated balloon, not to abstract the indicator, we put a foam plastic column onto the scales and set the scales at zero. Then we attach the balloon to the column and see that now its weight equals 4.46 grams. The balloon's weight has increased by 0.6 grams. It's much less than we expected. The observed phenomenon can be explained through the action of buoyant force. If the density of air is the same outside and inside the balloon, there shouldn't be any increase of weight at all, because air floats in air and it doesn't have any impact on the scales. However, rubber covering compresses the air inside the balloon and its density increases. So the observed increase in the weight is caused only by the excess of density, while the air inside the balloon weighs much more than this excess. So far, we have dealt with approximate estimations. Now we are going to measure the air density more accurately. We are going to use a stoppered flask with a rubber tube and a peg. It weighs 84.29 grams. We connect the flask to a pump and pump some air out of it. We pinch the tube with the peg and disconnect the flask from the pump. Now it weighs 84.17 grams. The flask's weight has decreased by 0.12 grams, and that's exactly how much the pumped out air weighs. Let us lower the tube's end into a jar with water and take off the peg. The water rushes into the flask and nearly fills it up. This means we have actually pumped almost all the air out of the flask. Let's weigh the flask with the peg and the water inside. It weighs 192.1 grams, which means the water in the flask weighs 108 grams. Let's recall that the air replaced by this water weighed 0.12 grams. To find how much denser water is in comparison with air, we have to divide 108 by 0.12 so it is 900 times denser. According to our measurements, water is 900 times denser than air. Let's take 900 kilos of water. The same volume of air weighs one kilo. We know that one cubic meter of water weighs 1,000 kilos. According to our data, one cubic meter of air weighs 900 times less, that is 1.1 kilos. 
More precise measurements show that ambient air density at normal atmospheric pressure is 1.2 kilos per cubic meter. Let's estimate how much the air inside the classroom may weigh. If its volume is 60 cubic meters, we have to multiply it by 1.2 and see that the air in the classroom weighs 72 kilos, which is quite a figure.